Well, let's get into the season a little bit. So we're going to um, take some some various highlights. We're not going to cover everything. Um, there's way too much to sit here and talk about. Uh, the reality is, is we have, um, especially once we get into each semester, we have uh, performances, multiple ones every single week. Um, there's a lot of student recitals, sometimes during the day, sometimes at night, and a lot of big concerts as well. So um, the first we're going to look at um, happens in September and November. I kind of paired these together. Um, the Concordia Wind Orchestra is going to be doing um, two different types of sets of patriotic music. Um, we're going to be partnering uh, with our... Um, uh, our um, Institute of Civic Education here at Concordia uh, and our Veterans Resource Center to do a Constitution Day performance. Um, this will be music from uh, the golden age of American town bands, some really early music. We'll be uh, performing some, some of the tunes that were on the streets during uh, the time of the Constitution, during the Revolutionary War, and uh, we might even squeeze in some fife and drum for you. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, that's a family event. Uh, we want to raise awareness uh, about the U.S. Constitution. And there will be um, food. As you see, um, concert advertisements come out. You'll see more information about, uh, I believe you'll be able to come and buy dinner. We might have a food truck or something like that. And it's going to be just a fun, uh, short evening program Uh and so please bring the family out, bring kids, grandkids. It'll be a lot of fun. Whoops. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the um, Wind Orchestra in November will also be doing um, a Veterans Day concert. And in that case, uh, partnering with the Veterans Resource Center. And there we'll be doing um, more concert programming that um, uses um, American... Uh, some patriotic, straightforward, but, um, you know, different uh, types of concert music that uh, fit a Veterans Day theme. Um, we'll do a short, probably half hour, 40 minute concert at 11 o'clock in the morning. And then that'll transition to a lunch out on the patio and um, some games for kids. Again, we're, we're doing two really nice family events um, starting off in uh, September 18th and November 11th. So please come out for either or both of those, and it'll be a great uh, great time for everyone. Um, we also want to highlight our wonderful faculty and guest artists. Uh, we have three uh, faculty or guest artist events coming up this fall. Um, we have a faculty chamber music recital in Zhang Hall. Please come out to that if you've never been to a concert here in Zhang Hall. It's really a beautiful, unique venue. It's small. Uh, it holds little over 100 people. And it's kind of in the vein of uh, the old classical uh, chamber halls where you get the name of chamber music uh, from. So some opportunities to hear some great chamber music. We have outstanding faculty. The faculty chamber music recital, it'll feature um, a Brahms trio played by uh, Dr. Julie Long on flute and uh, Dr. Shin on piano. And also, uh, if I'm remembering this correct, I believe Jared Turner, our viola professor. And then um, we'll be also performing some Debussy, um, and that will be um, oh goodness, getting a little mixed up, but um, a trio of wonderful faculty, including uh, one of our newest faculty, who's a former student that's a familiar name, which is worth mentioning, uh, Gretchen Kirby, uh, is now our on faculty uh, on harp, and we look forward to hearing her perform in that capacity. Um, and then finally, a jazz concert, our jazz program at Concordia has grown a great deal. We have a lot of events, including a big high school jazz festival. Um, this is a chance for one of our um, our uh, jazz piano professors, Mina Choi, to give a concert, and that'll be wonderful too. So please come out to that. Um, um, I will continue uh, by talking about the Sinfonietta. Um, we've had some wonderful opportunities to do some uh, pretty unique things. 
Um, again, uh, partnering with the Center for Civic Education, and in this case, the uh, Richard Nixon Library, we will be starting the centennial of American pianist Roger Williams. That name is uh, pretty beloved here in Orange County. Uh, Roger Williams had a close tie with uh, Crystal Cathedral, performed there regularly. Um, but he uh, is the all-time uh, most-selling piano artist uh, of all time. Uh, and he started uh, releasing uh, albums in the 50s and kept performing into the 2000s. His music is uh, largely the American Songbook, uh, does a lot of music in the uh, pops, uh, orchestra pops vein where he's the soloist. And so we have a great opportunity. Uh, the Concordia Sinfonietta is gonna be going to the Richard Nixon Library in Yorba Linda, and we'll be a part of their Sunday concert series. We'll be joined by pianist Brian Pizzone from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Brian is one of the top uh, studio uh, piano players in the area, and he will be emulating the old recordings of Roger Williams. We'll be doing this live uh, with orchestra and piano, and we've been working closely over the summer with the Roger Williams estate. Um, you can imagine um, that, uh, you know, an orchestra gets parts, they record it in the studio, and then the parts get put away in a box. Well, um, Roger's daughter spent many hours digging through boxes this summer, and we've come up with, um, we've pretty much put, put together the music. We're still working on it, um, but it's going to be um, a really fun concert uh, celebrating this music. Some of it will be uh, heard possibly for the first time since it was recorded, and it's going to be a great chance to um, perform some pops music and to do it in a new venue. I don't think we've had a Concordia group over at the Nixon Library, um, but this is going to be a big event that um, will be promoted to a lot of different presidential libraries for the centennial the next year. Roger Williams played for seven different presidents and has a close tie with Richard Nixon. So it's going to be a, a really interesting concert. It's a free concert. Please come out to it. Okay, finally, Woo. tired of talking. Um, Dr. Bush, <laughs> you're up. All right, our first major uh, choral event is a, a long-standing tradition here at Concordia, <clears throat> uh, stretching back to when we were Christ College. Um, I, our uh, former professor, Michael Burkhart, started this uh, wonderful um, tradition of hymn festivals. We are one of the few universities in the country that uh, has this as an annual event, and we invite major um, composers and church musicians to come in and lead this event. Um, it's anchored by the Concordia Choir and Concordia Master Chorale, and this year's guest artist is Tom Trenny. Tom Trenny, I admire so much. He's one of uh, the outstanding church musicians that uh, is <clears throat> doing so much for, uh, for church music uh, as a composer, uh, as uh, an event leader, as a speaker. Um, he's very pastoral, um, and it's like he has a really strong uh, message to say for uh, each of the programs that he's put together. So as the Hymn Festival artist, he has put together a program for us uh, entitled Sing Glory to the Name of God, a Festival of Hymns. And the orcs, or the uh, audience uh, has the opportunity to take part in this. And so uh, the most important choir actually is the audience uh, for this event. Tom Trenny leads us from uh, the organ and sometimes the piano. It'll feature some student uh, instrumentalists as well and some beautiful devotional readings. And so throughout this program, he'll focus on various names of God as creator, as spirit, as our rock, um, the true light, and the way. <clears throat> we'll uh, close this particular event with uh, one of Tom Trenny's new anthems called I Will Make a Way. And uh, the text is, Behold, I will do a new thing. Everything old has passed away. 
See, everything old has become new. I encourage you to come to this event. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that might be part of churches where hymns are not often sung, this is a great way to experience uh, hymn singing. And for, for those of you that are used to uh, singing hymns on a weekly basis, uh, this particular event is uh, transcendent in the way that uh, uh, we get to celebrate the theological poetry of the hymnody set with just beautiful, beautiful music. I might mention, too, that we're holding a big church music conference in conjunction with this event this year. And I want to encourage those of you on the call to uh, get your tickets early. Uh, we plan on really filling the CU Center this year with that uh, church conference. We've done this before, and we've um, we've had a completely full house. So please do get your tickets early for that event. It's going to be tremendous. Yes, and uh, Tom Trenny is actually going to be the uh, lead speaker for that church musicians conference. So this is something that you might want to tell your church music directors about or that you might want to come and uh, take part. It will certainly be an inspirational day, and that hymn festival is the culmination of that whole day. It's always one of the best uh, events of the year. All right. Um, we are currently in week zero, I guess you could say. <laughs> Um, we have welcomed over 30 new students, um, music majors and minors onto our campus early as we do every year for the music boot camp. Um, students come and uh, they get to know each other. They get to meet the faculty. We do presentations for them. They take tests, auditions. Um, it's a really a great event. And uh, we have really talented first year students and we're so happy that they're here. Um, also, we are already four rehearsals deep into the symphony orchestra season. We are going on tour in October this year. That's an early tour, so we are diving right in. And uh, we have spent four uh, intense, fantastic rehearsals focusing on the Carl Nielsen Third Symphony, which is an absolute war horse, an amazing piece of music. And I love seeing how our students embrace it and grow every single rehearsal. And we have uh, high goals uh, for the level of musicianship at this concert. We're going to be taking our concert to Texas this year. Really excited about that. That's uh, my home state. I grew up there in Houston. Uh, we'll be at some wonderful venues in Texas. Zion Lutheran in Dallas. Bethany Lutheran in Austin, St. John's in Cyprus, and we'll close actually at the church I grew up in, Trinity Lutheran in downtown Houston. All wonderful acoustic venues, and we have a concert called Musica Espansiva. Uh, the centerpiece is the big Nielsen Third Symphony. Um, kind of an interesting concert concept. We're going to start small. Um, we have a very talented commercial music student who also has really developed beautifully in classical voice. Uh, Maho Insuasti is a pretty familiar name now. She's a junior here. Um, she'll be uh, traveling from Columbia tomorrow uh, to come back to campus. And she is going to be singing soprano for us on this concert. And she's also going to learn the Baroque guitar, which we We'll be uh, taking into possession. We're having a guitar built for us right now from a great guitar maker in Los Angeles. And so the concert will open with the Four Seasons, or actually it'll open with Maho singing a solo, which would be pretty cool. And it's going to get bigger and bigger as it goes. Then we go into the Vivaldi Four Seasons, a beloved piece, very well known. Um, I don't know who's soloing on that yet. We're actually holding auditions tomorrow. We have a big, highly talented student violin section and we're going to hold blind auditions tomorrow. And there are several uh, that are auditioning, and we'll see who wins. It's going to be interesting. Um, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm kind of thrilled as the conductor and leader of this group to know that um, there are a lot of students that will do a very, very fine job on this solo. So excited to see who comes out ahead there. That'll be fun. We'll be doing that tomorrow. Um, we'll move that into um, a setting of Eric Whitaker's October, which will um, also incorporate the voice and a Gabrielli piece, 
then the big symphony. And then uh, so it gets bigger and bigger as it goes. And then we close out with a new commissioned hymn setting, which has become kind of a tradition in our tour concerts. This one commissioned by a Texas composer named Bill Brusick. And this is a piece for orchestra, organ, antiphonal band, and congregation. So um, we want to make sure it's a little bit bigger than the biggest they give us at the hymn festival. Um, and then we'll bring the concert home. Uh, we've done this the last two years, and uh, we have had such an awesome reception at St. John's Lutheran over the last couple of years. We'll be back on October 22nd and closing out that uh, tour at St. John's for a great finishing concert. Um, also want to make sure, again, we mention our jazz program and commercial program. Um, if you haven't been out to the commercial music concert, uh, it is a lot of fun. Uh, we have a venue not too far from campus called Campus Jacks. It's a live music venue, and we absolutely pack the place. You got to get there early if you want a table, but if you don't get a table, you're going to still have a lot of fun. Um, you'll be bumping shoulders with a lot of friends, and it's just a really, really great time. Uh, full of great music from, you'll hear music from our vocal pop ensemble and two commercial music ensembles and several, probably some soloists as well. Um, this year, it'll be uh, directed by Andrew Doolittle, who normally is our guitar professor. Uh, Steve Young is on sabbatical and he's uh, spending a lot of time focusing on composition uh, while he's away. So uh, we look forward to that wonderful concert. Dr. Bush, turn it back to you to talk about our Christmas concert tra tradition. So the Concordia Christmas concerts uh, in the last uh, few years, we've had uh, a wonderful opportunity to perform in a world-class concert hall, the Renee and Henry Siegerstrom Concert Hall. Um, and this year, uh, we're actually on a Saturday for, uh, for that event. Um, <clears throat> we're terribly excited uh, to be there uh, during Christmas time because this uh, we hear from our audiences often that uh, this is the start of their Christmas celebrations, that once they uh, take in uh, these Christmas concerts, that they feel like the season has begun. Um, <clears throat> this is a popular event also. So we have two different performances, one at four o'clock and one at 730. We are um, following a theme of Journey to Bethlehem and uh, and Navidad as part of our, um, our PBS broadcast. And uh, there's a great wealth of music, and uh, we wish you all to come and join us as we uh, journey to uh, the place where Christ was born and uh, and discover what that means for us. There'll be carols old and new. There'll be the familiar, and uh, there will be the unfamiliar, uh, and all carry that very strong message that there is a beautiful hope born for the world. If you uh, like to call politicians and be an activist, you're welcome to call your local PBS affiliate. Now's probably a good time. And uh, please put a pitch in to um, ask them to be sure to air our Christmas special. We um, we were in, I believe, 73% of markets across the United States last year, mm -hmm. uh, with most of the specials showing on Christmas week and a lot of them in prime time. Uh, so we have a really great exposure across the nation. Uh, we are one of the uh, most um, viewed collegiate Christmas programs in the United States on PBS. And uh, that's something we're really pleased with and thankful for. Um, also, uh, if, you've, if you're from out of town, uh, we encourage you to come make a weekend of it. Come to the Concordia Christmas concert. Um, parents, don't wait until the senior year of your, your kids. You're going to want to come back every single year. We have so many families that come out, and it's so fun to see them all. Um, Eric, are we doing a hotel thing? No. Maybe. Okay. Uh, you know, there's been talk about having a special hotel package. I don't know if that's happening or not. Um, so we'll just kind of leave that aside for now. Um, 
we might uh, mention that uh, tickets are already up for sale. So uh, in the past, uh, <clears throat> the box office hasn't opened up these tickets for sale until September, um, but uh, these have already been released uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, so uh, seats are already being sold. This is the only event, I believe, uh, in our per in our season uh, where our box office is not selling uh, the tickets, which is why you see that uh, website there, scfta.org. Um, uh, you'll work through the box office at the Segerstrom Concert Hall to secure your tickets. And thank you to so many of you. One of the things we hear from our concert goers about is they often use the Christmas concert as um, a way to bring friends and neighbors out to um, experience something Concordia does and to hear it in a, a Christian message of Christmas. Um, there's a lot of guests that are brought to the concert. So thank you all for doing that. That means a lot to us as well. Um, more choir stuff to talk about as we move into the second semester. So, Dr. Bush. Um, so, it's tradition for Concordia Choir to take a spring break uh, tour. And um, also, uh, this uh, season, the um, uh, the Jona Di Canto is going to be touring during spring break as well. The Concordia Choir tour uh, will take us to uh, the Midwest. Uh, we'll be performing in Indiana and in Michigan, and you can see that uh, we've got a concert set up at uh, the Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, which is an outstanding uh, uh, worship space and acoustic. It's going to be my first time there, um, but I've heard so many wonderful things. So if you have family, friends in that area, please let them know. Um, we already have our uh, venue set up, and you can see them here. And then um, we will be giving two Southern California concerts as well, one in the San Diego area and the other here at home in uh, the CU Center. Uh, if you want to hear collegiate singing at its best, I invite you to come out to, um, to this, this tour. Uh, it's uh, just a highlight for, uh, for me and all the students as we get to um, uh, close this concert as well with uh, um, a piece that's become very traditional to us, uh, Thou Shalt Know Him, where you're surrounded by uh, these beautiful, beautiful voices. It'll be wonderful. We're so happy to be getting the choir out to Michigan and Indiana. Um, so in the second semester, I will be on sabbatical, which means that uh, we have to turn the podium over to some guest conductors. I'm really pleased to announce that um, one of my all-time favorite conductors, one of the conductors I most admire and have all my life, and it's actually the conductor I worked under the first time I ever played trumpet in an orchestra. Uh, Steve Amundsen from St. Olaf will be coming and being a, comp a composer and conductor in residence, and he will be leading our symphony orchestra in some wonderful standard works for orchestra, as well as one of his compositions. Um, Steve Amundsen is responsible for um, raising the St. Olaf Orchestra to the prominence that it has now. And um, I consider him a great professional model. Um, and I'm so looking forward to our students getting to spend some time with him. So please come out and see him conduct our excellent orchestra. Um, another guest artist will be out um, in the second semester, John Wasson who is a very well-known composer in the jazz and concert band and marching band worlds. Um, he, and I believe we're doing one of his works on the Christmas concert as well. Um, he will be a guest artist at our jazz festival, which um, it, it brings several excellent high school jazz bands onto campus. And he'll be our composer in residence for the Concordia Wind Orchestra. And that'll be really cool. He's actually, we've commissioned him as part of this project to write a new piece for winds and organ. So Dr. Mueller will be stepping in on organ and playing this new piece. So uh, and our conductor will be Len Montgomery, who is our, our jazz orchestra conductor and is also a very fine concert band conductor as well. 
And then the one everyone's talking about, lots of buzz, <laughs> the video games concert. Um, we have Amanda Aiken will be our guest soloist for this concert. And she is the actual voice on some of the prominent vi video games um, that I do not play. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is, um, uh, it's, there's been a blossoming field of uh, video game soundtracks and taking them live. And we are actually working with an agency to bring some of the actual orchestrations that have been used on the, uh, the live international tours. And we'll be doing some of that here on campus with Amanda as our guest artist. She's based in Los Angeles and happens to be a good friend of our Dona DeCanto and men's chorus conductor, Clarissa Shan. And that's going to be a wonderful concert, also conducted by Len Montgomery and um, another excellent orchestra conductor, Elliot Bark, who's our um, musical leader at Crean Lutheran High School and is a really fine conductor and composer. So another great opportunity for our students to work with some fine conductors there. You want to take this one? Concordia is blessed to have uh, some really unique uh, music ensembles, and one of those is the Americana Group, <clears throat> uh, a small uh, combo that uh, performs a variety of bluegrass, swing, gospel, and uh, other kinds of uh, genres. Um, <clears throat> uh, many people don't realize that uh, one of our professors, Tom Mueller, who specializes in Oregon, grew up in a bluegrass family and so has brought some of that tradition and it's beloved. Uh, students love to perform in it and uh, we get a great turnout for those, uh, for those particular concerts as well. Yeah, we have a great following for that. And then uh, we have uh, uh, the student pianists and conductors um, that will be leading the Sinfonietta in uh, a concerto performance and uh, chamber ensemble class uh, led by our Dr. Hejung Shin. Uh, she's creating a number of programs throughout the year. And so you'll want to look at our season arts brochure to get a little bit more information about some of the other programs. Uh, but uh, this particular one, um, <clears throat> what, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, this particular one uh, will feature uh, the students who are learning to, to work in uh, chamber um, uh, kind of uh, combinations of instruments and, uh, and voices as well. Um, so this is yet, uh, in addition to our large group activities, this is another way that we build our students. So I uh, would love it if you'd come and uh, support them in these endeavors. Yeah, and just a little bit more about that piano studio recital will be um, using some student conductors on a Mozart piano concerto. And we've um, auditioned several pianists to perform the different movements of it. So it's a great opportunity for our students to get some, uh, some public conducting and concerto experience. That'll be wonderful. The Concordia Masterworks concerts are another annual event, and uh, we close our um, our choral season with this major concert featuring the Concordia Choir, the Master Chorale, and a professional orchestra and soloists. I'm very excited about the combination of works that we have uh, for this particular concert. <clears throat> Headlighting this concert is the Maurice Duraflay Requiem. Uh, one of the most beautiful of compositions for uh, chorus and orchestra. This requiem is, uh, is soothing, it's peaceful, and uh, at moments uh, triumphant as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's the interesting nature of this is that uh, Gregorian chant is set uh, with impressionistic instrumental colors. And uh, this is a much beloved work of uh, those that uh, enjoy choral music. And we've paired that with um, uh, a work by Rayfon Williams called Sancta Civitas, uh, The Holy City. Um, the, the work is actually in English, uh, despite the, the Latin title. 
and it's based on the mysterious writings of Revelation. And it, incor it incorporates three different choruses um, in this depiction of uh, heaven as uh, the prophets uh, were allowed to see it uh, in Revelations and also in, in Isaiah. Um, <clears throat> it begins rather ethereally uh, with uh, the woodwinds and low strings in the orchestra. And then we hear from a baritone soloist, I was in the spirit and I heard a great voice of much people praising and saying, Alleluia. And you hear three different choirs then uh, sing those Alleluias as you're surrounded um, by this uh, incredible tonal landscape. Um, the third choir is uh, an offstage choir that's going to uh, not be visible, um, but uh, you'll hear the alleluias as if from afar. So it'll be a really wonderful, um, expansive kind of experience. Uh, this particular work, the Sancta Civitas, the Holy City, is not well known, but Rayfon Williams called it his favorite of all his works for chorus and orchestra. So it's uh, quite significant that we're going to get to feature this work here at Concordia this year. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Okay, and then um, want to raise our wonderful handbell program. Um, <clears throat> the final concert of the year uh, of the handbells, their home concert is a concert of great artistry. If you were there last year, it was extremely impressive and beautiful to hear. Um, we have two outstanding handbell ensembles at Concordia, the concert handbells and the spirit bells led by Alex Giebert and Eric Durr. Um, we also have a chamber handbell ensemble. And I should mention too that we are now, we have what two alumni handbell ensembles that are active. Uh, one is, um, uh, the, a new one that we're starting this year is, it, I believe it's going to be doing a lot of commissioned music, uh, original compositions for handbells. Um, Concordia has taken a real uh, step into the lead in the handbell world in recent years uh, under the leadership of Alex Gebert, who's considered one of the top uh, composers of handbell music today. And we have some really interesting programming going on here. Just a few weeks ago, we had um, an auditioned uh, double handbell choir. Uh, musicians came from all across the United States and they did uh, a special program of music particularly conceived for double handbell choir. And um, we often, our, our instructors are often featured at national conferences. And it's really fun to see the type of prominence that uh, our handball program has grown into. So please do come out and hear them uh, ring. And also um, in both semesters, we're only shown the spring one up on the screen, but at the very end of each semester, we have a very impressive recital, the honors recital. Um, as those of you that come to a lot of different things realize, we have some very talented students here. And at the end of each semester, we do um, juries for those that take lessons, which is almost all of our music students. And the faculty pick out the very best performances from juries, and we put a public performance together. And it's a performance of great variety, um, classical to commercial, and it is a real highlight to finish out the year. Please consider coming out to that. You will not uh, be disappointed. And then um, finally, at the end of the year, we're gonna be doing yet another domestic tour. Um, the music department plays a really critical role for Concordia University. Um, we're over here on the West Coast, um, but we do draw a lot of students from across the nation. And we play one of the most prominent roles in uh, expanding our footprint across the United States and raising awareness for this fine university out here on the West Coast. And so to that effect, we are sending a group to the upper Midwest, to Texas, and Dona de Canto lo more locally. Um, and finally, the handbells will be going to North Carolina, Virginia, Washington, DC, and Maryland. 
and they have some very exciting performances um, as this group grows in prominence uh, when they are when they reach out to uh, the leaders of handbell communities anywhere in the United States, they're brought in with open arms. In fact, they're working out a partnership with the Raleigh Ringers, which is really the finest handbell ensemble in the United States. And uh, so they'll be partnering with them for a special concert in Raleigh, um, uh, North Carolina. So, um, and also I should mention too, um, going to Washington, D.C., one of our Alums Nick Hansen uh, runs probably the biggest um, school handbell program in the United States. And so we're going to go out and partner with him for some things too. Um, so again, please watch our website, watch our social media as concerts get finalized for, for that. If you have people that you know that live in the area, please send them out to the concerts. So finally, um, want to make sure you know where to go, please uh, go to cui.edu slash arts. Uh, that's our website, and you will be able to find all of our arts events. While this is a music preview, um, we have a great theater program uh, with a fantastic season. The big musical is Anything Goes. Uh, there's a Shakespeare play that will, um, the curtain drops, sort of drops. It's outside. There's no real curtain, I guess. But um, I believe that starts a week into September, I think is their first weekend. Um, so please go to our ticket site and pick up tickets to that. Um, in fact, one of my orchestra members, Emma Johnson, has a lead role in it. So there's going to be a lot of orchestra students at the performances, I'm sure. I'm really excited about that. Um, and please go and buy tickets to our concerts. Um, and not only buy tickets, but we list all of our public events at cui.edu slash tickets. That will take you straight into a website that you can scroll through and see our full calendar of events. And even if something is not ticketed, it'll say free concert, and it's a way of raising awareness for all of our concerts. So that's kind of the one place shop to go to, to, you know, if it's, uh, Friday afternoon, and you'd want to see if something's playing at Concordia on Friday night, go there. You'll see theater and music performances and even an, a few art exhibits listed on there as well. So um, please do uh, come and check that out. Um, our season arts brochure will be hitting mailboxes soon. Um, if you are not getting our mailings, uh, namely our season arts brochure, please send a quick email to box office at cui.edu and just give us your address and we'll be sure to add you to our mailing list. And um, we want to make sure you get our a wonderful print season arts brochure. Also, there is a lot of posting that happens on Facebook. You can go onto Facebook, please search Concordia Irvine Arts. And that's where you'll find our concert listings and a few other items about music and theater and uh, fine art as well. So um, please do connect in these ways. Um, these are the best ways of understanding what's coming up next. And, um, you know, remember, there's always something going on at Concordia. Thank you for being um, uh, such faithful audience members. Thank you for uh, your great support uh, through prayer, through recommending us to a lot of great students that are now students here, and also your financial support is deeply appreciated. Um, it makes us um, be able to run in a first-rate facility with first-rate instruments and equipment and scholarships to help bring in some really fine students. So thank you. I'll give you the last word. Just want to thank you for joining us uh, today, for hearing about our um, our season. And uh, there's so much more. We basically cut. Uh, we talked about maybe a third yeah. of uh, the events that are that are going on. And so, uh, look forward to seeing you this year. Uh, God bless. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.